So let's start our next section, 5.4, which is about the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I wanted to start off this section by giving you some motivation. So I'll say we have two motivations in this section. So the first one is we want to be able to compute the definite integral without relying on area. And so that's how we did it in the last section, was we computed definite integrals using area, but we want to remember that the problem with using area is that some regions have irregular shapes, which makes it harder to find the area. So in these cases, what we had to do previously is we used rectangles and the limit method. So we let the number of rectangles n go to infinity and take a limit in order to compute the area. So that's our first motivation. And our second motivation in this section is we use the following notation. So when we were talking about anti-differentiation, we used this integral symbol. And when we use, when we're talking about definite integrals, we use this notation. And so in some way, both of these use the same symbol. that integration symbol. And so the question is, how are these two related? If they're using the same symbol, then there should be some sort of relationship between them. And the answer to really both of these questions is found in the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so I'm going to write what it says and then in the next video we'll look at some examples but for now I'll just state it. If a function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and capital F is an antiderivative of the function F on the interval a to b, then the integral, the definite integral, is equal to f of b minus f of a. So I take an antiderivative of my function and I plug in my upper bound and subtract plug in your lower bound. So I'm going to end this video with a final note. For definite integrals, it is not necessary 
to use a constant C. We used that back when we were talking about anti-differentiation at the beginning of this chapter, but I want to show you that it's not necessary here. So let's look at this definite integral, a to b. So what would happen if we put in the c there, f of x plus c, and then we have our bounds a to b. And so the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us we plug in b into this function and then subtract, plug in a into our function. And if you look, you have a c and a negative c because of this minus that's out in front. So they cancel, and it's just going to be f of b minus f of a. So it's not necessary for definite integrals to write a plus c there because it gets canceled away 